everyone, my name is Dr. Robin Walsh and I'm a naturopathic doctor here at Vibrant Living in Waterloo and this is my two minute weekly wellness series. Today I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about the practice of meditation. This isn't my area of expertise but I do find that I see an awful lot of people in the state of sympathetic overdrive from the effects of chronic stress and we have to spend sort of months and months like um, sort of bringing them out of this state and rebalancing their health and so I thought that if I could give you uh, a few tools that I tend to find helpful um, that might help to prevent some people from ending up in that chronic state of stress. Um, so one of the maybe we can start with maybe some of the benefits or the scientific benefits of meditation. So one is that it reduces cortisol. So cortisol is obviously that stress hormone. Cortisol is implicated often in poor quality of sleep at night. So a lot of people that get stressed out their cortisol levels increase and then they can't sort of either fall asleep or stay asleep. Um, and so meditation has been found to reduce cortisol. Meditation has also been found to reduce the inflammation in the body and inflammation has has been implicated in everything chronic disease, so diabetes, heart disease, it's been linked to autoimmune disease, cancers, so really important to uh, reduce as much inflammation as possible. And then a third area which I think a lot of you will find interesting is that meditation has been shown um, to increase a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. This protein has uh, received a lot of uh, attention in the literature recently um, because uh, at one point it was sort of thought that as you age this brain shrinks and they've been finding that um, when you increase uh, this BDNF you actually grow new neurons or brain cells and it actually has been shown to improve memory. Um, so they're looking at uh, patients that have high levels of this BDNF, uh, having the lowest risks of uh, things like Alzheimer's and dementia. So um, really, uh, there's no drug at this particular point in time, at least, that's able to increase this protein. So it's really um, increased by lifestyle factors, one of which is meditation. The other sort of two lifestyle factors that can uh, be involved in increasing it are exercise and one of my sort of true loves, intermittent fasting. Um, but I'll talk a, a little bit more about that later. So in terms of tools for meditation, uh, I find uh, there's an app called Calm that I find really helpful. Uh, so she she has a 14 free, uh, 14 day free sort of introduction, um, and they're usually about 10 minutes in length. Uh, I usually tend to do mine before I go to bed. I just find that sort of the time that works for me, but whatever time works for you is great. Um, and then there's also an app called Budify. Um, Budify seems to be more of the meditation on the go. So I know a lot of people just have trouble getting this in and I totally get it. So um, that's another uh, tool that's available to you. If you're looking for more information on this space, again, this isn't my area of expertise, but um, my friend and colleague is uh, super um, knowledgeable. Her name is Amanda Weber and she has podcasts and blogs and a whole bunch of information that I think you would find helpful. Her website is amandameditates.com. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next week.